Now what I wanted to do is jump into Oxy Ninja and cover the framework specifically and some of the utility classes that are in it. So of course, I made a video on this, uh, I guess it's been like a year and a half ago, something like that. And, um, you know, lots of people have been really pleased with this. I know there's a ton of core advocates out there. I personally haven't used the OxyMade framework, but I've heard that one's good too. I just know that I've used the core one myself plenty of times, and that's what we're going to look at already, you know, today. Um, and specifically, I wanted to cover the framework because these columns are really useful, and then also just things like margin and gap and all that kind of stuff just keeps your design super consistent. So what we're going to do is go ahead and add in the Oxy Ninja plugin to our site. So you would download that after you check out. And this is really good if you're working with client sites and you want to have things that are really consistent. If you don't already have it, they did just uh, hook me up with a link. So let me know if you're going to check it out. Toby says OxyMade is a little more complicated, but it's based on Tailwind. So that's true. Yeah, I do know that OxyMade has more to it, but I don't know that that's good for newer users or people that aren't already familiar with CSS frameworks. Got it. So this is basically what it looks like when you click the Oxy Ninja option right here. So you have a slider component. So class lock, of course, is introduced in Oxygen 3.8, which is in the release candidate right now. So I think there's quite a few plugins out there that offer class lock, but Oxy Ninja does as well. The best place for us to take a look at the framework, first of all, is probably going to be like on our homepage. We can create a layout there and then just touch on some of these other utility classes like the sizing and spacing is a really good one. Backgrounds, shadow, rounded, transition, so on. So let's actually just switch over here. We'll go to our homepage and just edit this guy. Okay, so what you would do, typically I already have core on this site or had part of it, so I don't think it's gonna offer to import the style sheets and stuff, but you can see you have this little Oxy Ninja ghost up here and I want it to allow this. So. When you click that, I thought it popped up a little import export thing. Anyway, let's go Oxy Ninja. And this is what would normally pop up the first time that you use it. So you would go import selectors and style sheets and lock core framework classes. That's actually a new option. So this would mean that you don't accidentally make changes to the core classes, which would be good for keeping your designs consistent, but you might want to change this so you can edit things to your specific site. So I am gonna import those even though I already have them says everything is imported. So now what you can do is go to manage. If we look under style sheets, then we'll have a few of our core style sheets here. So these are the ones that are basically making our grids, which we'll look at in a little bit. So there's all of that for you. Carousels is, looks like the slider component that we'll take a look at. And then shape dividers. So that's cool. So we'll go ahead and build our own custom layout here in just a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to delete this entire section and we're just going to start again. So what we can do is actually take a look at our cheat sheet here. And this is how you can develop your own columns and grid layouts. Um, this one does kind of overlap with the grid that's in Oxygen now. But I do know that this grid is very powerful. It's pretty, pretty flexible and you have a lot of options. So essentially, the way that this works is you add the different classes to your grid and then it handles the... Uh, kind of responsiveness for you. So you can choose a column from two to six wide, and that's of course for your desktop sizes. So then on the laptop size, which is basically the step down here, so your page container and below, which is the laptop size, then you can change your grid to be one through five, then you step down again, then it's one through four, one through three, etc. So what we would do is start off with the first one. So let's go like C column four, so if we add in a div, if we go C, and you can see it's already there, columns four, then we would just add in a div. We would duplicate it four times to get our numbers of divs. And then what we can do is, let's say we want some spacing in between these, we would click this div right here, and we can come over here and look at the actual spacing options. So you have your gap, column gap S, M all the way up to extra, extra large. Let's just go with something like large since we have a four wide column here. So I'm just gonna type in our class search right here on our actual column container. We'll just go with gap M and this is the class we want. C columns gap M. So there we go. That added the gap in between there. And then what we would probably want 
is some margin. So, or excuse me, some padding inside of our divs there. So you have another class for this. So see padding extra small all the way up to extra large. So maybe in this case, we would go padding medium. And I probably should have added this to one of these divs before I duplicated it, but that's of course a super easy fix. Once again, I'll just go padding M. Another one we can add is shadow, which is just C shadow. And you can see it lifts up off the page a little bit. And I am essentially just going to delete those and duplicate this div. So it has the padding inside along with our shadow. So then if we add in a heading and let's say some text, we can take this even further with more of these core classes. So if we go over here and look, you have a few text size ones, text color, as well as your heading size. So let's say that heading should maybe be like an H3. We can just add a class for H3. So C hyphen H3. And then I would change my tag, of course, to actually be an H3 as well. Then the other thing we have is margin bottom. So if we type in margin hyphen bottom, then you have again, extra small all the way up to extra large. Let's go with bottom M. And then let's see with our text, what other options do we have for text here? We can go light, dark accent, tagline or tagline alt. Let's do tagline. So we're gonna go with C hyphen tagline. Like that, so perfect. And then with this, you would probably wanna go margin bottom M again. We would add in another text element and then what would be something to do here? So I think it's already gonna be our text dark class. So maybe we would bump the size up a little bit, C text M perhaps, something like this. So that looks pretty good. Let's just change this to feature one. You definitely want this. And then we'll just leave that text. That would kind of be your description. And then let's add in a button as well. So you might again want to add margin bottom M. And the reason why these classes are so handy is because you're not having to come up with your own class names. You're not having to add the spacing and all the numbers yourself. You can essentially just rely on these classes and everything is exactly consistent for you. The other thing I wanted to do was quickly add a button to this, to this uh, layout for us. So I'm just gonna use the regular button. And then let's see. So we have our button classes down here. You can see button style, size, and link style. So let's go with CBTN main. CBTN main as our class. Then let's go with C shadow. It might already have a shadow. I think it did. And then the other one I want to do is C transition for the hover effect. So you can see it kind of lifts up like that, which is neat. And I'll change this button to say something like read more. And then what other options did we have here? So we have C button small through extra large. Let's go with large button, even though I don't think that's going to quite fit. BTN large. Yeah, that looks fine, even though it's a, I think it's a bit oversized for this spot, but that's okay. So you can see all of this we just designed with relying on those core classes. Now, of course, this blue might not be the one that you would want. And of course that exists inside of your button main here. What that's doing is pulling in the core global color. So we'd go to colors, core, and then you could just change your accent from whatever is the default blue to your actual blue. And you can see, of course, it's changing in real time. So anywhere that color exists, then it would adjust. The other thing is we have an accent, oops, accent class. So we could change this to C text accent. And there we go. It just picks up our accent color that we just adjusted. Uh, so now to take this even further, once again, I am going to delete these since we have some content in this div now. I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times. We're going to change this to feature two, three, and feature four. And now is where we can adjust how this behaves as your screen size shrinks. So if we go ahead and change this stuff, you'll see it doesn't automatically get responsive for you, which is fine because you can adjust that yourself. That is what I was mentioning earlier about these classes. So these are where you would start to adjust things. So let's go to the tablet size and let's say we want it to drop to three columns at that point. Then we would go C column L3. So to search that, I'm just going to go with L3, and you can see C column L3. So now when I drop to 992, 
it automatically goes to three wide and pushes that one down. So you might even want to change this to four. Um, let's do that. I think we're going to change it to C column L hyphen two, sorry. So it's two wide in each row. So we're going to go L2. Then we drop to 992 and we got two by two. And then the next one down would be 768. And that one's going to be our medium size. And we would change that to one wide. So we would just go M hyphen one, C column M one, and we drop down to 768. And there we go. Now it's all one wide like that. So I think these utility classes, like I said, are fairly similar to grid, but it does give you some extra control. And you can also create some special columns too, really, really easily. So three by two, we'll take a look at that here in just a second. So in just this one card layout, we use like a bunch of the Oxy Ninja stuff. So our main wrapper here started with our C column uh, four. We added a gap of M, which is the gap between these two or, you know, any of the cards in your, in your uh, grid there. Then L2 is at your uh, device breakpoint. Then M1 is at, what is it, 768. And then uh, the other thing we did was on this heading, we used the H3 class and margin bottom M. There's an accent class here along with margin bottom and tagline. And then this other one here, you can see text M for medium, and then the margin bottom, and then the button styles as well. Uh, Taylor says the full width class is quite useful. Oh, right. Okay. So let's try it on this button. So C full width and bam, just like that, the button takes up full width. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's really handy. That's one that <laughs> I should probably start using more often. Sweet. So there is a quick little look at the Oxy Ninja framework and how it can help you. The other thing that's really cool is um, you can go to Oxy Ninja. Let's see actually not there. So sorry, settings. And then under Oxy Ninja, you have the ID and class lock. So you can lock all of the global core classes here, or you can do individual ones or, you know, single core classes. The other thing is if you add your own class that has the C in front of it, then that also gets locked as well. So you can kind of take advantage of that class locking for you. Uh, what other classes are here that we didn't take a look at? So the special columns we didn't look at, um, you can see there's a bunch of other options like margin, right? You can do card classes and, oh, rounded is another good one. I didn't actually look at that. So let's do that. Since we have this box shadow effect, if we add the rounded class, then we have a nice curve around our divs there. Very subtle, but it looks nice. So that's cool. And then let's see. Special columns. Let's go take a look at that real quick. So this one's C columns hyphen three hyphen two is what I want to do. So on this div, I am going to go margin bottom. We'll go XL. That way we get a bunch of space between these divs. Oh, did it not apply margin bottom XL. And then we need to add in a div and then we need to add in another div and this one actually went inside of our container here, which is why I was having trouble with it a second ago. So then I want to go margin bottom here as well. We'll go with extra large. And let's see. Oh, it's because it nested. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I, I accidentally nested these two divs inside of each other. So this case, I had it right. C columns three, two is the class I wanted. And so there we go. Now we have on our left side, we have a div that takes up basically three of the six available spots. And then this one over there takes up the two. So that's a really easy way for you to create kind of that offset layout. So you might have something like a heading, some text and a button here. And then you might have an image in kind of an alternating layout, pop that guy in there. And once again, let's just go ahead and use these uh, classes. So let's say this is our H1. We would make it look like that. And then we would go margin, bottom, medium is what we've been using. Margin, bottom, medium. It just makes everything look so good and consistent. And then we uh, essentially are just gonna duplicate this button. So I'll just do that. 
makes it way, way easier. And in this case, I don't know that the full width button looks that great. So you could just realistically remove that class. Then you might want to go ahead and this div over here and uh, let's use padding instead of margin. So we would go padding M maybe. And then there we go. So it's, you know, starting to look very consistent. So I do think the Oxy Ninja framework is extremely useful, especially if you take the time to really get used to it and um, and you actually use the, the stuff that's built into it. I'm very guilty of forgetting to do it and coming up with my own class names. I typically do that on the build streams, like come up with my own classes just uh, because I don't want to assume that people have core but it definitely would speed up your development, especially if you just start to get really comfortable with it and you memorize all the class names, you can just smack them right in and you're off to the races. Anyway, what I was gonna say is if you don't already have Oxy Ninja and you're interested, I just put a link in chat. So definitely check that out if you guys are interested. It does give me a little kickback and I certainly appreciate it. I know many of you already have it, but I just wanted to cover this because I do have people asking fairly frequently for uh, you know specifically how to take advantage of this layout. Now, for the sake of argument, there's been a couple of different spammers in here on the OxyMade side of things. Like I said, I didn't realize it was such a controversial, uh, you know, opinionated thing. I know that the OxyMade framework is, is very good, really comprehensive, and I think there's more to it. But to me, that's not what I want it for. I just want to be able to have consistent layouts and spacings and stuff, and that's really where this kind of kicks in.